All right, welcome back to another Conquest Corner. On this particular episode, we are going to be taking a look at the October updates for Spires. Now, the updates for most of the factions other than Nords and Wadroon were reasonably short. So in this, we're also going to talk about what it means for list building, for the army, the good, the bad, and all of that, more than just kind of mentioning what they are. So we're going to get into that in a second. Keep in mind, though, if you're looking to pick up anything either from Spires or any of these other factions related to Conquest, we do have a discount code in the show notes below. It's Terrain Kickers. Um, there's also a link that you can click on to take you directly into the web store through it. Um, saves you 10%, helps out the show, and really does help make sure that we can keep doing what we want to do here. All right, so Spires have a reasonably short list. Not the shortest. The shortest is probably 100 Kingdoms. Well, 100 Kingdoms, I'm going to do something a little bit extra when I do theirs. I don't know exactly when I'm recording them. My original plan was try to do like all of them at once, and hey, that ain't just happening. So um, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, the way this actually works, the left side is the new, the right side is the old, so that way when it's appropriate, we can compare those two and have them both shown. All right, so we're gonna go through these. So. Um, I said Spires didn't get tons and tons of changes. Mostly it was some quality of life, especially on some of the newer things they had, or changes to some of their upgrade pieces is really what they saw. They saw essentially two unit changes, up upgrade pieces, and all of that. Keep in mind, uh, they will highlight changes, all, usually in red. Biggest thing you ever have to look for is if anything has actually been removed because if it's been removed, they don't necessarily denote that. So you do have to pay a little bit of attention for that. And once the army builder is updated, I don't, at the time of recording, it's not yet. It might be updated, you know, for currently, but at the time of recording, it's not. All right, so first change that we see is what characters can take. So the big thing here is the Biomancer gains two things. It gains a mainstay of Desolation Drones. I don't know if I like him in Desolation Drones. I think it's nice that he can take a mainstay of them. So that's just a nice option. But I don't know if I actually like him with that particular unit. I see Desolation Drones as something that's just going to... They're out there to get destroyed. They're meant to do damage and then cause your opponent damage in their... Um, essentially when they go away. So I wouldn't necessarily put him there. I'd probably still put him with... Probably... I don't know. Maybe Bound Clones. If you want a little bit more survival, although the giant pack of force grown is never a bad idea either. Also, in terms of restricted, he now can take the siege breaker behemoth, which is nice because it wasn't available all over the place before. If we take a look at previously, uh, high clone executor couldn't take it. Bryborn doesn't take it. Uh, Pharomancers, nope. And the lineage highborn was the only one who actually did take it. Um, so that does now open up your options. If you do want to end up taking it, you don't need to take a lineage highborn anymore. I, I, I would, I just like that, but that's the way I list build personally. But I do really like the fact that now you have an extra option for your giant, cool looking monster. That is the only character that got an update. So they didn't change any points. Oh, other than, sorry, Famancer also can take as restricted desolation drones. So they didn't update any characters in terms of changing their rules. Um, but they did end up changing who can take, essentially, the newest unit. Uh, when we take a look at some mutations, so we know mutations got some changes. I think two of them, if memory serves. We'll talk about what they are. So, Cascading Degeneration, one, cheaper, 10 points cheaper. It used to give the character, um, the regiment, sorry, the regiment the character is attached to, or a death four. So remember, that was per stand. That's not how Aura Death works anymore, in case anyone hasn't actually taken notice. Aura Death now is a fixed value. If you are touching any of the stands that have the Aura Death, then you hit take that number of hits, no matter how many of those stands you are touching. The same exact way they did in First Blood. So now it's 25 points. They get Aura Death plus four special rule. And when it consists of five or more stands, it gain, including character stands, so you get to count the characters for this, it gains Aura Death plus eight. So, if you're touching any of the stands and I don't have five or more, you're gonna take four hits. I do have five or more stands. And notice it's the regiment consists, not that they're actually touching all those stands. So like when I take my four scoring drones, I usually go about three wide and like three deep, uh, counting characters as well. So I'm looking about almost sometimes, you know, seven, eight or nine stands there. You're actually taking aura death eight. Um, a good change overall. So aura death overall is much less strong than it used to be. 
that's fine if it goes across the board, but here's a nice way for them to get it, and it rewards you for taking larger units, and it's cheaper in general, so you won't get as much damage out of it in general, unless you have a really big unit, but you're getting for cheaper. I always liked Cascading gen Generation, that's something I often took, but I will say it does get a little bit expensive, so it can be a little bit tough to fit that and some of the other grades I may want. So anywhere you can save me a little bit of points is nice. Plague Lord, uh, again, they changed Aura Death, so Aura Death changed. Plague Lord used to be 20 points. You get Aura Death 6. Now it's 35 points. Friendly Regiment becomes a target of a Pharomancer Gland Burst or Mend Flesh Action. It gains Aura Death plus 4 until the end of the round. So remember, this is a mastery. So this is going on your character here. Um, keep in mind that for this particular one, uh, Pheromone Gland Burst is what Pheromancers take. Mend Flesh is a Biomancer ability. So you can, and Mastery of Flesh can be taken by either of them. So whichever one you want to put it on, when they do their abilities, they can put uh, Aura Death onto a unit. Um, very, uh, very useful change. It used to just be that particular character stand. So um, the other part with that is if it's on the character stand, you actually had to be touching the character stand to take it. So useful, but depending on how in which they hit you, especially if they're, say, hitting you in the flank, and your character's dead center in the middle, or okay, your, um, your your lead stand's in the middle, but gotten off of that. So they may not actually been hitting them. But here, okay, you can just give our death plus four to someone. You'll notice it's not mentioning a cap like it did in terms of Ultimate Minion when we talked about them. So if you do have some of these right things, you could be getting up to 12 if you also had um, a previous upgrade that we talked about as well. So if you had Cascading Degeneration as a mutation on that, and then you cast into that unit. And those are abilities you're going to be using anyway. If you're putting in environments, you're absolutely mending flesh. I don't know if that's the upgrade I would take. The only reason I don't necessarily know is because when I look at my Biomancers, I don't know if that's the main thing that I want. Although, if I'm going to take a mastery, that is a pretty decent one. Personally, uh, I prefer to do mastery of flesh for my mastery of flesh, because I like to be able to do my special abilities more than once. But if not, I can absolutely see someone taking Plague Lord. No changes to the final man, sorry, Pharomancies. No changes to the Biomancies either. We're going to get into the units, and we're going to notice there's not tons of, um, of changes here for these units. Um, some of the big ones, when we're taking a look at then of course, or some of the only ones I should say. Sorry, I uh, went back real fast. One thing I did miss when I was scrolling through because it's a tiny little bit of red, um, Pharomancer's Induced Lethargy is now eight inches. So uh, Induced Lethargy is eight inches instead of what it used to be. Uh, I, I don't know what it was before, was it what, 10? 10, yeah, it was 10. It's now eight inches. Um, induced Lethargy is super, super great because it gives your opponent minus one to their defense until the end of the round. So making it a little bit shorter is fine. It's a, it's a good trade-off because that means that you have to be closer to your opponent to make it happen. It means they're more likely to be able to do something about it, but you are harming them and harming them in a very, very meaningful way. So let's talk about the unit that got the most changes. The one unit that got changed, uh, this one had the most. So Desolation Drones, drop them by 20 points. First of all, I think this is a very worthwhile change because this is a unit that I don't think sticks around very well, or at least didn't. We're going to talk about maybe some of the changes now, but wasn't sticking around, was just getting, you know, wrecked pretty easily. It, it you know, it has lethal demise, so it's doing something back to you, but was kind of going away pretty quick. So they dropped them by 20 points. They also upped the defense by one. So now they're defense two instead of a defense one, which... Uh, I'm sorry, defense one with no evade effectively means everything's going through, especially if they happen to have any cleave or anything like that. You're not saving anything. Keep in mind, and I did check the rules to make sure they didn't change this because I know there's some little changes. Um, rules of one always succeed. One of the spots where that rule is broken is in terms of defense. If your defense is zero, you do not get a save. So these guys now actually more likely to actually have saves or at least uh, you're, you're saving... 100% more than you used to, and that means if they do have a little bit of cleave, say a cleave one, you actually at least still have something. Another big thing, their range went to 14 inches. So these are squishy units that are a little bit less squishy, and now they actually do shoot further. 
Um, again, it's only two inches, but that actually is very meaningful if you're looking at trying to make sure your opponent necessarily can't charge you. So if you're looking at, say, a six inch mover, at 12, you are a legal target and they might have unstoppable or some other bonuses or something that can get them in a little easier. At 14, maybe now you're not a legal target or a much, much harder target to be able to actually get to. The other thing is, they used to be 60 points a stand. They're now down to 40. Um, my guess, and, and this is pure speculation on my part, but I think I've played enough games that have some idea of why this is. When this unit first came out, and maybe it was in their playtesting, but I think they were really worried about what it could do. The fact that it had this armor piercing, has deadly shots, torrential fire, the reprocessing agents, like they said, which work similar to what we looked at before, induced lethargy, minus one to defense, and, you know, they, they wanted them to be a pure 100% glass cannon. And they pointed them like that. However, this is a game that contains shooting as well. And with a 12 inch range, only Barrage 3, which, you know, let's face it, they're also Clash 1 with 4 attacks. They're not fighting their way out of wet paper bag. So these guys needed to get into range to actually be able to do any damage. Now, when they did, they had a reasonable shot to get pretty decent damage onto people. And if you go and engage them, you'd be taking some hits back as well. And you're essentially probably going to take everything back that you do to them because they're not saving much of anything. So they were effective, but they probably lacked a bit of, or they were deemed worried that they were going to be too efficient. This game has shooting. You have ranged units. These guys are now a respectable distance, but otherwise they were one of the shortest ranged units in the game. Which means if you put your desolation drones out, if I happen to have someone with a very long range, that's what their target is. I don't want these things with their AP and lethal demise getting into me or hitting me and lowering my defenses. So I'm going to shoot these things. And if I'm starting to shoot at them, you're going to drop them really, really fast. And at 170 points for three and 60 more points for each other one after that, four stands of it at 230. If that's how you're spending your points and I have range units, I'm happy because my range units can absolutely decimate these. Or I can throw some chaff units at it, and okay, I have better stats than you, so the lethal demise doesn't hurt me as much kind of ideas. Um, especially now, it hurts a bit less. So I, I think maybe what they found is that they're a decent unit, but you're putting too many points, and you're making it too many eggs in the basket, that there's a lot of, lot of very good counters against. Even magic. On defense one, if I'm causing you hits, you're taking almost all of that in damage. Your resolve is only three. It used to be worse. You'll notice it's a red now, so original is even worse. But your resolve is only three, and unless you're a big unit, you're still on threes. I'm, I'm wiping the floor with these, this unit that way, if I can. So I think this is a good change. Do I think you'll see them? Yes. I, if I was running, let's, I, the army I currently use with Spires doesn't have any painted up. They probably will at some point, but when they do, absolutely, I'm going to put them in. Um, at this cost now, I can include a four pack for almost the cost that I used to have for a three, about 20 points extra, but that's fine. I would put a four pack. I put a four pack wide. That way, if someone does shoot me, I'm still going to have a couple stands left and at 14 inches, shoot them. And depending on what it is, might try to get into the lethal demise. So that's one of the two units. The only other unit that actually got an upgrade, whereas Siege Breaker. So Siege Breaker now is sitting at 210. So they upped them by 20. They also gave them an extra inch move, which is good because six inch move on your giant monster is really, really rough. The few times I've played him, that was absolutely an unbelievable downside to this guy. The other thing is he got unstoppable. Um, that's if you gave me the option to take an upgrade for 20 points, that all it did was add unstoppable, I would take it every single day. I would take it no matter what, because when you're only moving six or seven inches, the one extra is nice, but you're only still moving seven inches. Here's the target I want to charge. Oh, he's only 10 inches away. I only need a three. I rolled a two. Now my about 200 point model is worthless for a round. So you give me unstoppable. Now at least I get that reroll. I'm much more consistent. I'm actually getting into doing what this thing is supposed to do. For a monster, especially before, this was one of the slowest things out there. There's a couple infantry type units that are slower than this, but that was about it. And considering it's a heavy, when it's coming in means it could take it multiple turns, depending on where your opponent is, unless they really push forward to get to do anything. Well, now it moves a little faster. 
unstoppable. Excuse me, much more likely to get those charges in. So now I feel like maybe I'm hitting you about a turn earlier um, consistently than I was before. Where before maybe I was trying to get that long bomb five up charge. Now I feel I can reliably have a good shot at say a five up charge because I'm getting that reroll. I'm increasing my odds greatly. So before I'm not a long bomb charge and hope it works out kind of person. I usually like to be a little bit more short of the things I do. So if it was a five up, and I know that was going to put me in a bad spot if I miss, I probably just wouldn't do it. I, I position myself for the following turn. Now, with the reroll, I'm much more likely to do it, especially if it's like a four, taking that every single time. Where before, oh, if I miss this four, like I'm in a spot where I'm just going to get shellacked. Uh, maybe I don't do it. Now I do. Um, last big change, or last change actually in general, that I absolutely love. Um, it adds a consistency that I feel this faction needs, especially the units that take it. The change is your catabolic node. This is your essentially explosive canister in your units. It often is found in like uh, drones and, and units like that. Usually some which about 20 or so points is what the ones I remember. What it used to be, you roll 2d6, you choose when you're gonna make this go off. When the unit activates, you, right, sorry, it's when they declare a clash, I should say, but before they perform that action. So you're gonna clash, but you haven't clashed yet. I roll 2d6. You take as many hits as I rolled, I take the higher of the two dice, and they caused morale, and it all was treated as the flank. Um, the big problem with what it was, was how random it was, and that it was right before your attack with this random nature. So right before I swing with, maybe I have a unit with a good amount of stands, but maybe they're not the best type. I rolled two dice, and there's been many times where I rolled a six and a one, which means I'm taking six, you're taking seven, and your stats are probably better than mine on the units that I might be taking this in. And it's causing morale, and it's causing in the flank where some of my guys have shields, I lose all of that. I had this, it was a little while ago, if I don't know if you watched the battle report or not, where my avatara had um, essentially this go off. It, it was from a biomancer, but it's effectively the same sort of idea. The ability go off, and I took like three times as much damage as my opponent, even with my much better stats. And now I'm looking at catabolic nodes, and I'm looking at units that have bad stats, or generally have bad stats. What it does now, um, Again, it's before the clash, so you hope you don't take too much damage through doing this. But um, if you choose to de de uh, sorry to um, detonate it, your opponent takes eight hits. You take four. So they remove the random. You are taking half as many as your opponent, but you know exactly what they're going to do. You're going to hit them for eight. It counts as flank, but no more morale. You used to do morale. It no longer does morale. So, um, and if it's... And the other, I don't believe this was a thing before. I just want to check real fast. Yeah, it was not before. So this is for the good. Um, if the regiment is destroyed before the catabolic node is detonated. So if you destroy a regiment and the node has not gone off yet, you immediately detonate it before the regiment is destroyed. So if you destroy me in close combat and I didn't get a chance to use it, say you, in this particular round, you went before I could, I get free eight, I get eight free hits on you before I'm gone. That alone, uh, depending on the type of factions you're going against, maybe if you're going to like a, a very shooting heavy meta, maybe not. But if you're going to a close combat thing, if I have nothing else I want to spend, Catabolic Node just as the, you know, fail safe switch at the end, absolutely great. Just eight on my kits, my rock shots, do that. And I absolutely love, it. I've had that take out some stands. So one, I, I like the fact that it's much more regimented now of what happens you know you're not gonna get screwed and get destroyed because you know they're taking eight, you're taking four. You're not worrying about that morale. That also means that they have good morale, you don't. You can still just set it off because you don't care what happens on that stat. And you always get to use it. So it's 20 points on your force grown drones. It is the only thing they really take. So yes, um, they're pretty cheap. If I, if I have the spare 20, I wanna take it there because that's a unit 
that I want to punish you for having hit. Especially if I take some of the other things, the like the upgrades I can give lethal demise and all. So I'm hitting you then, and I'm hitting you with an extra eight at the end. It's a character upgrade. The name of it. The generative aura. It goes on biomancers or pharomancers, but I like my biomancers and big old unit force horn drones with that upgrade. So that way, every damage you do to me, you take the damage back. And if I had a catabolic node, then you're also going to take eight at the end if you actually defeated me. Which, let's face it, not there, so very tough to do. Okay, that was where I looked up that. Who else takes it? Bound clones. A little more expensive, a little more survivable. They have a better shot at using it early, because they'll actually survive it going off early. Because they're at least on defense too. And you're not doing resolve anymore, so the other two doesn't matter as much. You're only taking four. So worst case scenario, you're taking that. You're losing a stand. They potentially could lose one to two stands, depending on how many wounds it has. Uh, maybe. Would I put it on the onslaught drones? How about node? It, I get if you have the spare points, and that happens to be what you're running. Sure. Uh, I'm eh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Those are the ones. So. Clones, yes. Horse grown drones, absolutely. Onslaught can. Just depends on if you had the points. They might, for me, uh, you know what? I mean, they have burnout, so they might be goat. They might be, you know, sort of flash in the pan. And now that it can go off at the end, no matter what, that can be actually very useful. For an extra 20 points, I can guarantee that even if I burned out this unit and I don't have that many left, when you swing at me in close combat and finish off the little bit I have that you're taking effectively almost two stands worth of hits so you know what yeah i so this building talking a little bit about that first of all i i do think i do like the changes i do like the things that they did they changed the aura of death to match what they're doing for everyone else you get to take your desolation drones a little bit easier which is good because it's the brand new unit that they now have made better so they let you take it in more spots and they made it a lot better in my mind i'm absolutely saying like if i was this i'm taking some desolation drones now for sure i, I think they were cool before but i think they're much much better now easier to get your siege breaker if you want one of those your siege breaker is a little bit better a little bit more points wise but that's okay because he's just better in the useful ways you'd want you would have paid those points anyway for those abilities catalog node is amazing now i i think it was very good before but I think you have a habit, or if you're me, had a habit of the way in which you roll, it's screwing you over. It's no longer going to screw you over. Like I said, worst case scenario, you can just put it on there and it's the dead man switch. I would absolutely be putting that on my unit with my, say, Biomancer, who has lethal demise. So you are taking, if, if all you are is close combating me, you are taking as many hits as I have wounds plus eight which really can mess up some people and really punish them for what they're doing to you. And again, you could always start off early, but the fact that you have that as a, as a fail safe, I think is really, really good. So that's what I think of overall these changes. What I think it's going to mean for list building, you're going to see more desolation drones. You are going to see less needing to push the, um, the lineage highborn to be able to get that siege breaker. If, if that's what you want, so now you have other ways to take it. So maybe now people will run a little bit less of the um, brute or monster mash style list. And now you can run more of your biomancers, pheromancers. You can run more of your pure infantry sort of builds and still have a giant monster. And like I said, I, I think you already have marksman clones for a good long range fighting. Now you have good desolation drones for a bit shorter, but more quality than the quantity perhaps, especially considering the rules that they can give and lowering your opponent's defenses, which is especially good if you can do that and then they had a balk node into them for eight hits at a minus one on defense. All right, so that is everything related to Spires. Uh, listen, let me know in comments below if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're not, go to YouTube and you can put some comments below. What are you doing? What do you think of these changes? Is there anything you don't like? Is there anything you would have liked to have seen changed? From my perspective, I think Spire's in a decent spot right now. Um, there's some other small things that they could do, but I, I don't, nothing stands out to me in terms of it absolutely needs a change other than probably the Abomination. I like the Abomination, but I don't find it performs very well. 
I think it's really fast, and maybe it's just the way people have to use it, but Abomination, I think, could maybe use a little bit of a tweak. Even if you only dropped it, I don't know, 10 points, maybe that's what it needs if Siege Breaker's going up or something else. Uh, but again, that could just be me. I, I find it I find it underwhelming. It's not technically very expensive, but I do find it a bit a bit blah. But otherwise, I think they're actually in a really good spot. I I like that the changes are going to cause some differences to your list, but you're not having to go like maybe some of these other factions, go back to the drawing board and redo everything. If you have an army that you liked, you can probably still play and alter it a little bit. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for this. Like I said, keep in mind that if you want to pick up anything for Conquest, we got a show uh, discount code in the show notes below. Um, other than that, that's a good hobby. It's a great gaming.